and welcome back class. When we left off we were in 350 BC. Japan was exploring, trying to expand its borders. We were keeping our eye on Osaka. We're assuming the capital is somewhere in here, but we'll find it. And our hoplites had discovered the Behringer Crater, which is very exciting. Now, we're trying to get up here and we're trying to find out where Montezuma is because we don't know. We've only seen his Jaguars. We haven't seen his empire at all. And uh, for the Greek, not having knowledge of where such uh, a mighty foe might be located can just be uh, devastating, can be so terrifying. And uh, around this point in Greek history, Alexander is actually born. So right now we would have uh, a 13 year old Alexander uh, ruling uh, Greece. Our two cities, Athens and Sparta, would be uh, in the midst of that kind of rule. And uh, you know it's it's an exciting time for us. It's important for us to see what's going on with uh, with these people. And our aim right now is going to be to explore and to build up our strength. Um, with Alexander now born and now a child, he would be uh, under tutelage from Aristotle himself, along with the rich and famous of Athens and Sparta. Now, um, an interesting thing to note is that while we're allies with Cape Town, we're only friends with Almady, we're friendly with Warsaw, but we have absolutely no influence over Florence, which is just uh, not good. We need to figure out a way to get in. Unfortunately, the only way for us to gain influence over Florence is to destroy Cape Town, which obviously we're not going to do. So we're going to have to figure something out. It may be that uh, Florence will have to fall to the Greek uh, before we can uh, before we can proceed with building the Hellenic League of City States. Uh, at this point, there's nothing this hoplite can do. We can't get into Warsaw, uh, so we're just going to have him head back to Sparta. Uh, I guess we need to move this warrior out first. Move this hoplite to Sparta, where he belongs. And move right along with how we're doing. So, you can see Osaka sitting there. It's actually a very powerful city. It's more powerful than Sparta. Not as powerful as Athens, but definitely more powerful than Sparta. And we need to... Excellent. So we found this barbarian encampment at last. We're going to get rid of it, but first, we're going to start building some new things in Sparta. In Sparta, we're going to get some, uh, some improvements started. As soon as we've got uh, another hoplite ready. Now we have a settler here. And we have a range of areas where we could settle. Right now we need to keep the Greek Empire tight and focused. So we're going to bring it up just up here beside this mountain. So I have a good feeling about these hills. I think we're going to see a lot of resources in there. So we're just going to move the settler right there. And this warrior is going to go with them. And we get to adopt a policy. In 300 BC here, uh, Alexander is uh, in his middle age. And we are going to focus on getting things built. Which means we're going to do the Republic. Plato often spoke about the Republic. He had a... Uh, a whole book about it, a whole discourse about the Republic, uh, many of which was his discussions with, uh, with his teacher and mentor. So Plato uh, was having a series of discussions with his mentor Socrates, um, and that became uh, the Republic. And a lot of early texts were written in this way, as if they were 
uh, an actual conversation, a forum, if you will, between different people, and often between two people or, or within a school. And uh, these dialogues, these discussions, again, are, are part of the Socratic method. Now, we've got players entering the medieval era, which is troubling, but uh, we're going to catch up, just as Greece did. But first, we're going to get rid of these barbarians. Now, they have been wounded, which leads me to suspect... Yeah, there we go. Leads me to suspect that we have discovered the edges of uh, Montezuma's domain. And what else would be wounding them? Why else would they be uh, unhealthy? Why would they be hurt? And Almaty, uh, in another show of friendship, has gifted us with uh, chariot archers, which is uh, actually a fantastic gift. Three things are necessary for the salvation of and we have achieved theology to know what he ought in to 250 BC. To know what he ought to desire. Uh, so now we're able to understand, and well, not, not entirely understand, but certainly to think about um, the afterlife, uh, gods, uh, the Greece has an entire pantheon of gods, and we have moved into the medieval era. As I said, we'll, we'll catch up, and there we are. We have caught up with the world, and we've surpassed other parts of the world by entering the medieval era. Um, in Greece, of course, uh, these types of, of castles with uh, large dragon pennants on them uh, were not as popular as they were in, say, England, but you did see them popping up here and there, uh, particularly when more influence uh, from city-states like Almaty and, uh, and Cape Town, and particularly Florence, uh, crept into Greek architecture. And we get some production that we can choose, and we need to build up this city. In order to build up this city, we're going to have a wonder built in it. And now we get to choose our next level of research. In order to decide on what we want, we need to see what is the most practical for us. And right now, the most practical for us now is currency. Because we are going to be running low on money uh, Greece historically goes into a bit of a depression uh, in the last few centuries before Common Era, uh, economically speaking, but also um, in terms of general happiness. The Greek are just uh, suffering from a general malaise, uh, a general ennui uh, at this point in history. They want to know uh, what is the point of, of everything. As you can see, these soldiers, you know, they're bravely running down these uh, these archers, just just ruining them. But as they do so, they're wondering. They're wondering, what is it all for? Why? What is the meaning of our existence? And just on cue, we've achieved our companion cavalry. Where we're going to send up here actually and you can hang out back in Athens young man you I would also like to head up in this direction you can go right there because Florence uh, is doomed essentially Florence is not a nation um, a city-state which is capable of playing well with others and, and as a result, they have to get a timeout. And historically speaking, of course, a, a timeout uh, means uh, total annihilation. So that they can think about what they've done uh, as they essentially reorder their uh, lives. And we're going to move this guy up here, but we're not sure if he's going to arrive in time. We'll see. So yes, uh, historical timeout, which, which just means utter destruction for Florence, uh, which, as we know, uh, did not survive into the modern age of the Earth. And these, these hoplites have one more task to carry out. 
mats to destroy these inferior swordsmen and claim these ruins. Or Greece. And we received some gold. Nice work, Hoplites. You get a rest. You can deal with your ennui here on the coast, looking out at the rare uh, endangered seagulls, near the elephants, the fish in the sea, deep in the forest, where you can really get to know yourselves, get to know what it was all for. Now, these gentlemen are already here. They're going to have them on alert. Because Florence is not long for this world, despite their catapult. Because Cape Town will, of course, also be aiding us in the destruction of Florence. A lofty goal, I admit, but uh, we have to live up to history's standards. And history's standards demand that uh, Florence dies and there's really no two ways about it. If we want to get them up there, it's going to be another two turns. Okay, we're just about ready. Actually, let's have them here instead. As Florence is uh, asking for it, so really, what can we say? What can we say? Except, goodbye. It was nice knowing you. Etc. But uh, until we're ready for that, we're just gonna just gonna hang out a little because a golden age has dawned, and we're gonna talk a little more about that golden age and what it means in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to rate this course. We'd really appreciate a thumbs up, or if it so catches your fancy, a thumbs down. If you weren't happy, uh, give us a comment or a question, something you'd like to know about Greek history. I'm always happy to indulge uh, the, uh, the willing mind. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe to this course, uh, simply click the subscribe button at the top of the screen, and you'll be notified every time a new course is available. Until next time, all the best.